Hello, this is Scott Dahman, Director of Business Development at PowerWorld Corporation, and I will be explaining some of the new features in Simulator version 13. A couple of changes to the user interface include the ribbon, which is based on the Microsoft Office Vista uh, Fluent user interface. And basically what it does is integrates the toolbars with the menu so that when you select a menu item you get a set of context sensitive toolbars which are based on that menu item. The second thing we've done is we've added what we call the Model Explorer which basically integrates all the old case information displays into a single window with tabs that can be used to switch from one object type to another. This change in the user interface was driven by a couple different factors. Uh, first of all, as Simulator has grown, we've added a lot of lot features, new features to uh, the program, and it gets very complicated with all the different toolbars, uh, and also just for the user to be able to figure out what's the most common features, and you know how to do basic uh, task sensitive things, and the ribbon uh, basically fills or answers that problem. And then secondly, with the case information displays, uh, there were just getting to be so many of them that a user would typically have open at one time uh, that it would be very difficult sometimes to, to find uh, buses and areas and transmission lines and so forth if you had a bunch of different case information displays open. And the Model Explorer greatly simplifies that. And I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Simulator right now. When you first launch Simulator, most of the ribbon options are disabled. To open a case, uh, or basically go to the old file menu in the old interface, you click the application button up here in the upper left that has the Power World icon. And from here you can access most of the old options under the uh, file menu, such as opening a case or creating a new case. And if I want to open a case, say the B7 flat case, I can just do it from that menu. And now the ribbons have a lot more different options. So for example, on the case information menu, if I click the case information uh, part of the ribbon, I can see that there are a lot of different options that are related to case information displays. Uh, from here I can open the new model explorer, for example. And I can see in the Model Explorer the different object types along the left-hand part of the screen. And then in the right-hand pane is the actual display itself. So for example, right now I've got the bus records open. And I can see basically the familiar case information display for the bus records. There's also a toolbar. The Case Info toolbar uh, appears inside the Model Explorer. So I can easily access a lot of those options. If I want to look at generators, then on the left, on the Explorer pane, I can just click Generators, and then it appears. And as I open different um, case information views in the Model Explorer, they're arranged in tabs up along the top that then I can easily switch between, too. So if I want to switch from the load records to the generators, I can just simply click that tab. And that way it works very similarly to the uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer version 7 interface or the uh, Mozilla Firefox interface as well. Switching back to the slides uh, and more on the ribbon interface, the uh, ribbon interface has a couple different components to it. Uh, the application button of course that we've talked about, the quick access toolbar is a container basically for commonly used commands that you want to be visible at all times. So if there's a command that you like to use, you can add it easily to the quick access toolbar. And I'll demonstrate a little bit more of that in a moment. The ribbon tab shows the things, basically the old menu options, like the case information, the draw menu, the one lines, tools, options, and so forth. And underneath each one of those, you can see basically one or more ribbon groups. The uh, ribbon commands are organized into 
uh, different uh, groups such as the mode over here on the left, the case information display, case data, etc. Uh, the help button is also always visible in the uh, upper right. Basically our design goals in switching to the ribbon interface were to keep things kind of context sensitive and simple. Uh, basically to bring attention to the most commonly used features and then also to, to group things uh, in a way that makes sense. Of course the case information ribbon tab allows you to navigate the data in your model. You can open things like the model explorer, area zone filters, uh, and so forth. Bus view online, substation view online uh, are also available here. Uh, the next one over is the draw menu and that's basically used in edit mode. It replaces several different menus and groups uh, the different components that used to show up in the old menus into their own uh, ribbon groups. The one lines tab uh, is primarily used after you've already created a one line diagram for navigating. Uh, things like contouring can be done here, layers, uh, views, zooming in and out, accessing GIS tools, etc. The tools tab has a lot of the run mode options that were shown in the, uh, the old tools menu and these are generally all found in the base package of simulator. There's a separate uh, ribbon tab for the options which, I mean I'm sorry, for the add-ons which we'll talk about in a moment. The options tab groups a lot of the buttons together that deal with uh, different options in the software although each one of these buttons are also available on other ribbon tabs as well. And then the add-on tab provides access to the add-on tools uh, such as the optimal power flow, security constrained optimal power flow, available transfer capability, and PVQV curves. Then the Windows tab uh, provides access to things like help, uh, you can switch between open windows and so forth. And as I mentioned, the quick access toolbar is a toolbar that's always visible. If I switch back over to simulator here, I can show an example. Here's the quick access toolbar. So by default, it includes things like being able to save the case, uh, being able to load an auxiliary file, opening the model explorer, the log and so forth. You can always float the mouse button over the uh, option to get a hint as far as what it is. One of the things I like to have access to at all times, um, or actually two of the things, are the bus view online diagram which I use quite frequently and then also the ability to be able to switch between open windows. If you've got a diagram open, if you've got the model explorer open and perhaps a few other things open as well, it's nice to be able to, to easily switch between those. I like those available on the quick access toolbar because I like to use them frequently. And it's very easy to add something to the quick access toolbar. You just right click on it and then click add to the quick access toolbar. And then it appears up there alongside the other options. So I'll go ahead and add the open windows one as well. And now I can access those uh, regardless of which of the ribbon tabs that I'm that I'm presently on. And then back to the Model Explorer. Uh, again, most of the case information displays from previous versions of Simulator have been rolled into the case information, or I'm sorry, into the Model Explorer. And it's easy to get to from the case information ribbon tab or from the quick access toolbar. Uh, as it is there by default. And the motivation again is just really to simplify navigation. Uh, if you've got a lot of different windows open at once, it's much easier to switch between the tabs in the Model Explorer than it was to locate different windows if you had a bunch of case information displays open. And the Explorer pane is again the part on the left and 
it is organized into different folders uh, with different topics like the network folder has things like the uh, the network objects like buses, generators, loads, branches and I can shrink and expand each one of these as well. The aggregation folders has things like areas and zones, owners, islands, so forth. And again I can open uh, different things as well. If I want to look at things on the solution details like the Jacobian uh, that's included there and so forth. Uh, there's one for optimal power flow, one for transient stability which is a feature that we will soon be added uh, to Power World Simulator 13. Um, but even in the meantime you can go in and edit the different uh, options or you can assign them uh, presently even if the tool is not uh, included, even if the analysis tool is not included uh, in your add-ons yet. As before with the old case information displays, you can access a local menu of options by right-clicking in uh, within the case info display part of the model explorer, and you can bring up things like uh, showing a dialog for generators, loads, and buses, uh, and so forth. Things like the display column options, uh, and and a lot of the things that are also shown in the case information toolbar along the top here can be accessed by right-clicking to bring up the local menu. And back to the slide, uh, this slide just shows a summary of the uh, Model Explorer and the different components uh, that can be accessed there. So of course you've got the Explorer pane on the right, the, uh, the tabs, the recently added tabs. Uh, if you get too many of those tabs along the top, uh, you can also close them as well by clicking on the X. So that's about it for the uh, uh, new features or in the user interface. So thank you for joining us as we explored the new features in the Power World Simulator 13 user interface. I uh, hope you found this session beneficial and certainly check out some of our other training sessions which are available as well. And of course if you have any questions you can always call us at Power World Simulator at uh, 217 384 6330.